Thank you very much for this opportunity to be at this conference. Just a few clarifications before I begin. Uh, the, even the cover slide isn't here. The paper is called The Plan and the Flare Practices of Pomorian um, Boat Building and Seafaring. And uh, I'm just uh, doing another master's in uh, social anthropology at the University of Oslo. Uh, but my field materials are going from my previous field work which I've done when I was a student of European University in St. Petersburg. And um, I wanted this slide to represent that by Pomorian, I mean just geographic, just spatial, uh, the practices that were and still are at the coast of the White Sea and the Barents Sea. And um, yeah, so my kind of, um, and these words like plan and a flare, refers to my main research question, which is formulated as how does interaction with environment in practices of wooden boat building and using the boat navigation work? And uh, the research question is mainly based on Tim Engel's concepts of dwelling and building perspectives and aim to show how these two go together. So what happens to the skill of reading the waves when appears iPad with GPS or what happens to the eyeball method of measurement when an owner of the boat wants to have precisely calculated drawings or even 3D models of the boat? To answer this question, um, the following field work was done. Sorry, the slide where it should like be for uh, like showing the way of the field work. But still, firstly, I volunteered at shipyards at Arkhangelsk uh, city where um, the Boat builder from the village Leshukonsk went there to make a boat, which was uh, uh, which was made for purposes of historians that want an authentic traditional boat. But then I went to the villages of two villages that accessible only by helicopters and are at the area of national park, where uh, which villages were famous for their boat builders of the past, and still they are using wooden boats very much there. And at the final uh, stage of the field work, I went to sailing expedition at Skandalaksha Gulf uh, at one of the wooden boats. And my interlocutors were mainly boat builders, navigators, fishermen and fishermen, local activists and national park uh, officials. So um, I begin with the findings of boat building on boat building and uh, as ethnographer of the 19th century, uh, Sergei Maximov mentioned, um, it has been well known that boat builders know neither drawings nor plans and are guided only by the skill and some architectural flair in building the vessels. Uh, so through months of participant observation where I uh, took part in these boat buildings, I, I can see that this flair mainly consists of trained contextualized measurements. And the context of these measurements include wood structure, other parts of the boat, previous experience of the builder, origin and location where it is happening, and purpose of the boat. So the boat customer. The customer, usually definer of the boat, and affects the process even if absent. I will allow myself to share two small notes about authenticity, so far as boats which construction I observed were traditional. And the slide presents the process of cutting bands um, from young spruces, which boulder, boat builder will later insert inside the boat. And since the spruces are quite um, just cut, they are being dried inside the boat. So first kind of they are um, formed as the boat, so they are turning into the forms of the boat. And then when they are dry, they will uh, support the boat when they are dry. And on the left, uh, there is a knee, uh, which is here. And um, interestingly enough, this knee was uh, also usually is from the, from the root of the tree. And uh, boat builders never used them like from the old boats, because old boats were left in peace to, to just die their, die their um, death. But here, uh, the, because the villages were on a, on a national park territory and there could be um, 
fees if you cut the tree, a boat builder decides just to use the old uh, knee from the old boat because the customer of the boat was just a fisher uh, woman from the next village. And even more uh, attention worth this story happened at the Archangelsk shipyards. Um, here also, my uh, sorry about the slides. There is a two knees, like the stems or the of the boat, and um, the boat builder discovered that he forgot one of the prepared knees at his home village, and boat builder decided to use kind of epoxy glue mm -hmm. to 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 make planks together. Um, because this technology is even more solid than using the knee from the root. And the boat builder, when he does the boats for himself or just inside the village, he usually uses this technology. But when the customers through social networks, basically through Instagram, evidence the usage of the glued blanks, they called the yard owner and forced boat builder to get back to his home village and get authentic knee and rebuild the boats because sign agreement between them say usage of nature crooked materials mm -hmm. and one more story in this context happened because he didn't use any measurements he just was like this architectural flair or eyeball method but volunteers including me who was helping him did measurements and um these measurements were not important for boat builder at all um but when the owner like the customers of the boat also noticed that the boat is longer than stated in agreement they also forced him to redo the boat again <laughs> so yeah do relax that lex and uh, i'm going to the seafaring very briefly and before i do that i briefly mentioned the important characteristic of the white sea which influenced uh practices of navigation historically and today the plenty of stone ledges and sandbanks which also can change their position after the storms, rapid changes of depths and contour currents, high tides and extremely low temperature of water water. It was known that Pomer could not swim and they just didn't need it. Being out of board would mean death. And they usually also take the white shirt with them, just uh, be ready for death. And therefore the, um, the, the, the seafaring skills were very important and i will not go deeper into that i just see the show that first there were wooden crosses that helped in 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 navigation then it is interesting uh thing it's sailing directions or logs where the roots were kind of retelled and they were recomposed recomposed and given from one family to another and finally at late 20th century my interlocutors say that gps arrived first from uh from 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 also kind of from the military but then they were uh liberalized and used in 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 fishing and all in all that was also in one one more important component which was skill and here i give a flow for my interlocutor um so he says there was another case one special one, one, one specialist hired me he was graduated from a higher maritime school in murmansk he went to the sea he had such a shabby compass. We went to the open sea and the compass fell into three parts. He was in panic. Then he went, tells a story how he went for P and give a will to this specialist. I go in right? Right. Are you sure you didn't lose the way? Yes, I did not. And I'm sensing from the wave that the wave doesn't hit right. Are you sure you're telling me you're not fooling me? No. And he was ashamed to admit that he graduated from the high maritime school and he has no flair for navigating. So he lied to me. Then I swore at him. I didn't swear much. Why didn't you tell me the right way? How much time do I need now to tune myself again, to feel how to go? Because the fog is carrying wisps and I cannot see. It took me a long time to tune in, but finally I got myself back to tune. So uh, I will not concentrate here on this kind of opposition between this maritime school in Murmansk and his flair, but what I want to state is that uh, also, this fixed field experience, uh, this flair, consists of multisensorial reconciliation, combination of the following parameters. The direction of compass arrow and vector on the map, boat position, the wave direction, the direction of the sound, 
So for example, two fishermen mentioned how they got lost in the fog uh, and through reflection of the sun from the rock, uh, big rocks, they define their location and find a way home. And the captain of the vessel also mentioned uh, the, where I participated in this expedition, he said that like the wind should be blowing into the right lobe, feel the wind with your ear lobe. Mm -hmm. So it's also not only about visual expression of like where the sound goes from, but the feeling of the sound. And um, uh, also there, one of the tools that could be used is following the shadow position, which could be found inside the boat. And finally, there was uh, apart from the all these components, the time was also very important because the tides and all of which, I like every component, has their own temporalities. And this is also an important part of the skill. And as for my conclusion, will be more a uh, confession, I think. <laughs> Who cares about the wooden boats? But what I can see now that there's motives about boats consist not only the interaction with the environment topic, and even to cut the tree for a boat builder, officially he has to perform several almost ritual visits to that guy and have a several dozens of paper to be filled, measure the tree with special equipment, wait for documents, approval in Moscow, and only then cut the tree. Does he do it? Well, depends. And also when boat is being used, for fishing, for example, to fill the logbooks, which then should be checked by special inspection. There is a special kind of flair of filling these logbooks as well, because the sea resources uh, also has to be documented quite precisely. And finally, uh, wooden boats are also a matter of cultural heritage, politics, and by politics here, I mean, in the redistribution of power. And for example, the region which historically used the same wooden boat boats, like the uh, order of Norway and Russia, now completely different in these terms of how the uh, politics of cultural heritage preservation uh, is going on. So everything goes on frontier. And therefore, I believe that boats are interesting prism through which you can take a path and, 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 and follow them. So I'm looking forward to the next stages of my research. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Fantastic.